Aquarius, will you stop worrying about who you are and just be it? Aquarius is unique. It drives creativity in a way that the other signs simply do not. Fixed air. Um, it is the cold wind in February that rips through your soul. It's skiing on the slopes. Friendship and camaraderie that you get sitting around the fire. Aquarius is about service. Now, a few things that I read prior in the original idea of the course was that Aquarius was, I think, more like Aquarius. I disagree with this. Um, not that Aquariuses don't think, not that they don't have unique ideas, because they certainly do. This is Saturn. This is the the big orbit and Uranus, things not seen, things beyond our realm. We think of things in ways that that grow and expand us. And Aquarius is just naturally expansive. It's just explosively expansive. It is ideas that come to you in the night and you just can't stop working on them because you're obsessed. That is the difference between are you being yourself or are you worrying about being yourself? Are you doing what you love or are you worrying about how other people are going to react to that. And that's where we want to kind of take the Aquarian concepts and chunk them down and put them into something that is much more palatable. So there's a lot of talk about the age of Aquarius. We're entering into the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius, age of Aquarius. That song from the late 70s. Now, the age of Aquarians is probably still 150 years in the future or so. Because it's the actual marking point is when the sun um, is in the constellation of Aquarius when on the spring equinox. So right now it's in Pisces. And, um, and this is from a astronomical perspective as opposed to an astrological perspective. Um, I think it's important to, to, to clarify, right? Because these astrological ideas are really old, um, and they have a lot of value in them, but we know so much more about our universe now and we know how things interact, and we know how to delineate. delineate. When we talk about astrology, um, it is about delimiting time, and it's about delimiting who we are as people, right? It's about identifying who we are and where do we fit in the world, or really, when do we fit into the world? And because, like, the solar system is kind of like a giant clock that keeps keeps time, and it wobbles a lot. Um, you know, we have the progression of the equinox for the Earth, which kind of is what we're talking about when we're talking about age of Aquarius. And we have interplay of the planets. So one of the things that really kind of warmed my heart about astrology being a thing is that um, recently researchers have found that the sun will reset when Venus, the Earth, and Jupiter line up in a certain way. And so, um, and it's about every 400,000 years. And you can see kind of like a cooling of the sun and you can see this in the um, kind of hidden, those Milankovitch cycles. Um, and that, that global climate 
research that we, we have coming out. And there's things with flipping of the, um, the magnetic field of Earth, the magnetic field of the sun flips every, I don't know, 12 years or so. There's sun cycles. So everything's in a cycle. And we actually think that um, Jupiter was moving. Jupiter and Saturn interacted in a way that they are where they are in the solar system now, and they didn't come in and crush us. Um, or at least crush the dinosaurs, because uh, we're definitely not around when that happened. So, but like, I think discussing like, what people are thinking of as the age of Aquarius is really important, right? So when this concept of age of Aquarius came out, it was, um, it got Star Trek, which the information technology from Star Trek, we have definitely, uh, jumped into. And I think Star Trek is a great example of the age of Aquarius one, because it's time set in the age of Aquarius. And two, because it talks about technology and ideas. So if Aries is the age of the ram and Taurus is the age of the bull and Pisces is the age of the, the fish, um, where we, and we can see that in religion, right? So we can see, you know, Christianity uses the symbol of the fish. Judaism uses the symbolism of the ram. Ancient Minoans used the symbol of the bull. So we, we can see that symbolism as we go back. Aquarius is the age of man. So the water bearer, the person that carries the water. Kind of frightening if you think about global warming and how everything interacts. So let's experiment with that idea. Let's move it forward. The water bearer, right? So the next great resource is going to be water. Um, obviously with global warming, fresh water is becoming less and less available. And as we go out into the solar system, water is going to be the primary thing that we're looking for in order to survive, right? It's heavy. Uh, we think it's up there in sufficient quantities, but the first couple places we're going, the moon and Mars don't have a lot of it, right? And it's probably not going to be in good shape when we find it, right? It's going to be deuterium heavy, which we don't work, you know, it's just a bad vibration for humans. Um, and so we're going to have a lot of issues to work with, with water and you know, both in the expansion out into the solar system and with global warming. We're going to have to start doing more desalination and kind of going through that purification process. And there are going to be wars fought about over water. There's going to be people relocating. The rest of the ice caps are going to go. And it's going to be a very interesting thing. And we're going to have um, this kind of Canadian, Russian, Alaskan, and um, Antarctic possibly driven society, right? So the, the melting of the, the southern ice cap is going to be really interesting because like, I think it's really clear that the northern ice cap is going to go. But depending on how the, the Earth moves, and you've got that Southern Ocean circling around the um, Antarctic, that could really preserve the Southern ice cap, no matter like what the hell we do, you know, hypothetically. Obviously, I'm not a scientist, and uh, I think uh, most scientists would disagree with that. So probably... Probably the safe to say everything's going to melt, but there's no way of knowing until you, you actually get there. And that is 
a crazy concept, right? So, I mean, so what happens when Greenland melts? And that's going to be, that could be in our lifetimes. Um, and we have the rebounding of the earth in the northern hemisphere, which is quite significant. We see it a lot of sinkholes and stuff like that. We think that basically the whole center of Greenland is under under sea level because the ice has just pushed it down that much. This this is what we're kind of going into with the age of Aquarius and we want unique and new ideas. We wanna we wanna adjust. We want to continually learn. Right? If we're setting goals, we want to set goals that we aren't sure that we can accomplish um, because we're growing and we're going forward and that kind of ties into the whole bicycle concept of as long as you're going forward you're going to be staying up. Aquarius is about going forward. It's about um, building friendships, providing service, um, doing the things that you need to do, right? When we look at Caesar's battle a battle plan going into Elysia. You know, what's he doing the whole time? He's he's going forward. He knows he can't attack the the town directly, so he builds ramparts uh, to defend against an attack from the town. He finds out that messengers are um, going to get um, people to come and attack him on the backside. He builds ramparts on the backside of his thing. He's always in motion throughout this entire battle, and I really think it's one of the turning points of humanity because it is, um, you know, technology against uh, basically the traditional human way of living. They are equal at this point uh, when it comes to the Roman conquest of Gaul. The Romans are writing everything down. They have all these details, all these ideas, all these engineering feats, and they're going in against a united front of all this old technology, people that really know their stuff and are really smart. And so if the Gauls win, could it's a significant blow to writing, right? That's the difference between uh, the, like, a small community of nations in um, the Bronze Age, so where you have Egypt and Assyria and um, all those that Eastern Mediterranean region, right? You have all those, and when they fall, there's writing's done. Like no one writes for uh, 150 years or at least not at scale, not at the scale that was happening um, in Egypt. And everything has to rebuild. Um, everything starts anew, right? So Aries is, well, that's the time of Aries, and what Aries is what remains after the winter takes everything away. That's not guaranteed. Could have kind of devolved into fishing villages. The Celts could have won. And... Yeah, there's a lot of amazing things that the cults did, and they had a lot of amazing practices, but they did not live our lifestyle. Um, they did not live a lifestyle that could sustain 7 or 8 billion people on a planet. That's, um, all right, it's technology that helps us be where we are. That's the lesson of Aquarius, and that's why everybody's like, Age of Aquarius, Age of Aquarius, Age of Aquarius, it's because it's the technology and a realization that the technology is moving us forward. Now, it doesn't do it naturally or particularly well. Again, like nothing is certain. You know, there are billions of people living in po poverty and that is, that's a real consequence. But, you know, the lesson of Aquarius is that we need to move forward through that steady the ship and sail forward you know air aquarius is an air sign and like i think thinking of it as a sailing ship really delivers a lot of thought because you can move with the wind 
what's interesting about tacking is um, you can't move with the wind faster than the wind. So if you're going in the same direction as the wind, you cannot, like, basically your top speed is wind speed. However, if you go against the wind on an angle, you can go faster because the sail actually kind of works like an airplane wing and you can get extra speed and the sail will actually lift up the boat, which is, is pretty in incredible. They've done some experiments where you can actually outpace the wind in the wind literally direction where you um, where you tack back and forth against the wind and go faster which is really a, a really fascinating I was watching a YouTube video and there's they basically have like a wind turbine on a on a car and they use the wind turbine as a sail to get the car going faster than the wind in the wind in the in the, uh, the wind really direction and it's not it's not much it's like super arguable if it like actually worked or not but like it's kind of a cool it's kind of a cool thing there is so much more energy in things than we can we can imagine there's so much ener more energy within ourselves and there's so much more energy within the people that we love and connect with and Aquarius is about building those connections and getting that energy from that greater from that greater energy. So in philosophy, we talk um, talk about entities and kind of what makes up a logical entity. And so you can have two people so that the, there's one person that's an entity and another person that's an entity. But there's a relationship between those two people, which the relationship is a third entity. And so and then you can argue if the each person has a relationship with the relationship it, it can get you know five head illogical but you know we definitely know that if we have two things there's some way those things interact and that forms a third logical entity and it's it's how we measure these vibrations that really moves us forward. There's, um, so the prevalent theory of everything right now is string theory. And so we talk about quantum theory in, as, a, as an example, as a kind of a, a touch point in self-development, right? So we talk about quantum leaps. There's, um, you know, you don't move in a singular uh, constant direction. You move in fits and spurts. We talk about quantum tunneling, right? So um, you can, you know, with certain vibrations, you can penetrate through things and kind of move forward, right? It's like that gratitude. With gratitude, you make progress forward that you wouldn't have otherwise made and these are these are illustrative um but it's possible with string theory that we can take go from these illustrative theories to actual a theory of everything of uh, the god principle i think um is something very, very interesting. And we kind of get back to how does Spinoza and Einstein really, you know, how did they really think of the universe? I remember the first time I read Ethics from Spinoza. And I, not so much the actual book, but the impact that it had on me, where I was just like, this is this is something right this is this is very true this is a very this this essence right so as we talk about so both einstein and spinoza were jewish and questionably religious and one of einstein's quotes is i believe in the goddess of spinoza and spinoza had this very intricate concept of who god is and what god was and the 
the classes that I were taking were very atheistic, uh, which didn't, so the conclusion was kind of like, oh, Spinoza obviously was an atheist. But I think if you go back and you, you read it, it's not that clear, right? Einstein said that there is either um, magic in everything or magic in nothing. It's hard to deny that there's a lot of magic in the world, right? When you start working on your self-development and working how things connect and following the path, it's hard to deny that maybe there's something more to life and maybe string theory is it. Maybe that'll des describe everything. I kind of hope it does. That would be, that would be fun.